Hello. I'm going to do a short video about the output properties of JavaScript. JavaScript is a script language embedded in all browsers and it has the advantage of being interactive, meaning that the user can interact with the web page by sending information into the web page using JavaScript and receiving output from the web page from JavaScript. Today we're going to do output and tomorrow we'll do input. Okay. I would like to start by showing you that I'm using a shell or I'm sorry, a template that is in your course files um, canvas and in that template we have the script tags I embed my script tags in the body you can embed script tags in the head also but there's a lot of advantages to embedding them in your uh, body okay I also prefer you can put your scripts in the document by placing them in this between the script tags just like we do with our styles however I prefer to import my document I create an external document and import my JavaScript into the, the code into the HTML because the code is easier to maintain in an external file okay and it's really simple all you do is add a source attribute to your script tag Put the name of the JavaScript or .js file as the source, and I want to give you a hint. Just like the images, it is definitely to our advantage to have them in the same folder. Okay, so if you have them in different folders, you have to go through XPath, and I haven't demonstrated that for you. I will at some point uh, tell you how to put XPath in the source it's really easy it's what you call breadcrumbs all right so now that I've got this inserted here I want to talk about what JavaScript's output is capable of okay I'm gonna put over here uh, output from JavaScript can be uh, used in three ways these are comments for JavaScript okay the first one we're going to talk about is the console you can send a message to the browser's console now the user will not see it unless they go to, uh, use a key combination to go and and observe what's put in the console okay but the way JavaScript Access the console of a browser is console dot log. Okay, and it is just like a um, output any output statement in program language. Except for this is not going to be displayed in the document. It's going to be displayed in the browser now I have it open I have my page open in the browser and as you can see there's nothing on the page <coughs> excuse me on the document shift control J as in John will show the output that is placed in the console now this is the console area console area it works just like a java just like the browser interpreting javascript i can put some things in here that are javascript statements they will be executed by the browser in your book they do a little math and okay and it gives the answer okay uh and it's immediate at at the uh, browser's console okay 
but it's not in my estimate it's not the best way to experience JavaScript the best way is to place the statement in a document call a document into a web page and the output will go to the screen okay so uh, the, the statements to the council are executed in sequence just like any other statement that we put in and it will execute them one at a time in sequence now of course you won't again you won't see the message until you go j control shift j all right and it hasn't run yet right cuz i didn't reload when i reload i get both messages okay that is output to the console you won't be putting messages in the console if you're going to communicate with your user. Okay. So I'm going to comment these guys out. I will leave them on the screen so that you can uh, observe the syntax. Okay. The next method is uh, JavaScript can write to the document and output to the browser window. Now this is going to appear on a document just as if I put a tag in. As a matter of fact I can uh, dynamically create HTML using this statement. Okay, and I call it a statement because it is document dot right and I use line there's right and there's right line If you haven't noticed, I am a space addict. I like the fact that we are returning to outer space. All right, I'm going to put this on the document in the window. You will be able to see it immediately as we run it. As I reload, it shows up. Okay, now this is placed only after any of the HTML has executed. Okay, I don't have any HTML, so we actually see this statement first. But if I have, for example, my header, and I'm going to put my header in here. Okay, as you can see, to save time, I've, I uh, turn off the recorder to type in these statements. The uh, header that I usually use is a header with an H1 and an H3 as a subheading okay and if I go back to my document and reload it you can see well, first you gotta save it I should save it first yes there you go now if I go back to my document you can see the header has been inserted okay but there is this is created by the JavaScript on the way to the moon. The header is HTML created, so the HTML will appear first. Now, if I was outside, if I put that JavaScript in the script tag, it would slam any JCL that we had. I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> any HTML that we had in our document. JCL is job control language. 
All right, so I'd like to style this, so I'm going to turn it off. And, and I use my normal header styling. We've done it in class before. As you can see, the attributes that I use are text align. I'm centering my text. Background color. I'm changing the background color of the header to light blue. And color is the text color or font color that all the characters in my header will be red. I'm going to show you that. And you can see I get my header. Okay. Now, I don't like the fact that this is very small text. So I'm going to go back and change this text in my JavaScript document.write by using a p tag with style attribute now this is one thing you must note about the JavaScript document.write if you have double quotes on the outside you must use single quotes inside or if you have single quotes outside you must use double quotes inside uh, it is a preferred practice because if you don't one open and one close double script open and close double script inside of an open and close double script causes the statement to blow up okay so doubles outside singles inside singles outside doubles inside and all I'm going to do here is I'm going to change my font size to 40. Okay. And close that guy. Over here to the end. And close. Yep. That guy. Doubles outside, singles inside. And as you can see, you can even embed HTML tags in your document.write. Now, your document.write will allow you to create the page dynamically in your JavaScript basically by coding all the tags the way I've indicated here with my p tag. Okay. Now, now that I've put information on the page, there is a way to communicate with the user without even before the page is even loaded without even loading the page. And I'm going to go back. The statement that we can use to communicate with our user before the page is loaded, there are several, okay? But the first one we're going to talk about is the output from JavaScript, and it is alert. Alert, it creates a little dialog box that appears before the page is loaded, okay? And what will occur is there will be a box. It will give you an opportunity to respond to, to make sure that the user has read the information. And then it will load the page. So when I reload, you know that I don't have my background. I don't have my uh, P tag. Okay and that the page is awaiting for me to respond to this alert. Hello brother, this is a created by a alert. And there we have our header and our p tag. 
Now, the alert, remember, occurs before. There are several of these. There's alert, there is confirm, and uh, there's a prompt, which prompt will be in the next video. Okay. Alert. Now, what happens if I put uh, an alert before the document dot right? Okay, and one after the document dot right. What will happen? Well, let's see. Okay. I'm going to reload it. This is before the document dot right. Do we expect to see the page loaded? No. It will go to hello my brother. This is created with alert and then it will load the page. So if you have several alerts they're going to occur before the page is loaded. That is the sequence of events when you're using JavaScript. Okay, I've placed an empty p tag on the HTML document. Okay, I'm going to place information in the p tags inner HTML. I think I've discussed this with you uh, using my JavaScript statements. Okay. So I'm going to save this and go to my JavaScript in here I will now with the P tag do a document dot get element by ID okay now my P tags ID is P1 and you remember I said I'll put ID on almost all of my tags. Well, I do this so I can access them, pull them out of the dome, access their attributes using JavaScript. This statement, get element by ID and get element by tag name, are the it dominates the dome access. Okay, dome meaning document object model. Sorry, document object model. Okay. And I'm going to access the inner HTML. I'm going to make it equal to something. And I'm going to say, uh, hmm, 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 hmm. Kirkwood is the best school. This might not be known to you guys, but Kirkwood is a suburb in St. Louis. Okay. So I'm going to, again, watch the sequence of events and what happens when I execute or reload my page. Okay, First, I get my alerts, both no matter where they're placed on the page. Then I get the page. Okay, This is created on the way to the moon is created dynamically with the document that write. The tag exists, the p tag exists, but there's nothing in it. If I didn't write to that inner HTML, there would be nothing here. So let's go back and experience that. So I'm going to comment out my statement here and go back and reload. I get my alerts. And as you can see, there's nothing in the p tag. The p tag is there, but there's nothing in the inner HTML. I do get my document that right, my dynamically created content on the page or document. So if I take this off, we'll see again that we'll get a small, but I would like to make this a little larger. By going H2. Okay. 
Okay. Now, note, I did the styling with H tag. I changed the, the size of the text with the H tag. I could have used uh, CSS, a style attribute, or put CSS in the style tag. I decided that I would simply make it larger using the, the header tags. Now it's going to be larger and bold. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to save my script again because I made some changes. And alert, alert, boom. You can see I get the document information placed in the P tag of the document. Now, all of these methods that I've just shown you allow us to send information to the user. This is output from JavaScript. Okay. There are other ways to uh, send output to the user. This is it's really uh, prompting the user or uh, getting a confirmation from the user. Those two are like the alert. They occur before the page is loaded. And then you can collect information to put in your program. Okay, this has been Mr. Ellis showing you how JavaScript creates output for the user.